In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make sure that you're getting the most important part of music right. This is gonna be an exciting video that's not so clarinet focused and a little bit more general music focused, but if you wanna get the best tips and tricks for playing the clarinet, make sure that you check the link in the description and go to quickstartclarinet.com slash join to become a part of the official Quick Start Clarinet community where you'll be on the best path to succeeding at learning the clarinet. So what I wanna talk about here is counting rhythm. Rhythm is the absolute most important part of music because if you think about it, you can play the right note, you can play great dynamics, you can play that note perfectly in tune with a beautiful sound, but if the rhythm's wrong, then you're gonna either be playing it in the wrong spot or holding it too long or too short and then everything is wrong about it because it's maybe the perfect exactly how you want note, but it's in the wrong spot so it doesn't really count. So I wanna give you two different ways that are really effective for counting rhythm and to make sure that you're doing it properly and able to understand and play all the right rhythms in your music. I'm not gonna get into too much detail about how to figure out the counts or how rhythm works in general. I just wanna give you these two little tricks that will, will help you think about a couple different ways to actually count rhythms and put rhythm counting into practice. I will tell you, however, though, that the trick to playing rhythms really properly and to counting rhythms properly is that you have to have something keeping track of the steady beat and then something keeping track of where you play and how long you play the specific notes on the page. So that's the, the little secret and basic foundation that you need to know to make these two different ways of counting make sense and work well for you. So let's get into these two different methods of counting. The first one is maybe a little more simple and easier to comprehend, and I think if you were gonna use both of these, I would start here with the first one. And the way this works is you keep a steady subdivision going with your voice, and then you clap the notes that you play and the rhythm that you play. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a little two measure sample rhythm and count through it with both methods. So what this rhythm is, is there's a quarter note, two eighth notes, four sixteenth notes, a quarter note, a quarter rest, uh, three triplets, and then a half note. So this is two measures in four four, and we're gonna use this sort of as like our demo to count through these rhythms and, and make sure that they're correct. So the first method of counting is where we keep a steady subdivision going with our voice and then clap where we play. So I always think it's a good idea to get your steady beat going first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna start clapping. So for this, it'll be, let's go about one and two and three and four and, so that's the steady beat and then we're gonna clap this rhythm along with it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and a four and one and two triplet three and four and. So you can see by doing that method and you can rewatch it a few times if you wanna sort of follow along and get it for yourself, but I'm keeping the counting in my voice perfectly steady and that's the steady beat and I'm fitting the clapping to that. The other method, which is maybe just slightly more advanced, but I think it's more similar to what you have to be thinking when you're playing, is where you clap or tap your foot or use a metronome as the steady beat, and then you just say the notes and the counts where you start on, and then you're doing all the subdividing in your head and sort of have to sustain through when you're singing to show it. But I think this is closer to how we actually feel when we play because when we're playing, we can't use our voice to have the steady subdivision. That steady subdivision has to be in our brain, but we can tap our foot to have that steady pulse going in our body. So that same rhythm with the second method would sound like this. Again, we get the steady beat going and then we put the counting to that. One, two, and three, and a four. Two triplet, three, four. I hope this gives you some ideas about different ways to count rhythm. Just remember the very important things are that you're having a steady beat, whether it's in your voice or clapping or in your foot or the metronome, you have that steady beat and then you put the note values to that. So that tells you, by figuring out the counts and the measure, that tells you where you start and then how long you sustain the note or how short you sustain the note and it gives you the actual rhythm. So rhythm is always two parts. It's the steady beat, the sort of grid that the uh, meter or the time signature gives you. In this case, it's 4-4. That's laid out and that's 
dictated by the steady beat and then you put your rhythms into that and make the note values fit with that and then you're able to play a consistent and controlled rhythm and your notes are in the right spot and they'll count when you play beautiful perfect notes at the right time. And if you aren't regularly counting through your music and doing either of these methods of counting, I really encourage you to do that more. A lot of times students are really unconfident with rhythm because they don't know how to figure out the counting or how to actually count it with a steady beat. But rhythm is the number one most important. But it's also a little bit easy to fake because you can just listen to recordings or listen to what the people are around you are playing and sort of fit in with them. But in order to be a musician at a really high level, you have to be able to have that internal pulse and that steady beat and place your rhythms exactly precisely. And that helps the whole group when everybody's thinking about being really precise. That's how you get really clean, really awesome sounding groups rather than everybody sort of guessing and just feeling it and then the time doesn't stay steady and they're not really together. So if you want to help your band or your orchestra play really precisely in time and, and sound really clean and great together, it all comes down to you having your own internal pulse going and able to very clearly get these rhythms to be precise and really be able to count your rhythms. I hope you found this helpful. Go grab some of your music that you're working on, whether it's solo music, band music, whatever music you're working on, and try these two methods of clapping and counting to make sure that you're able to get those rhythms exactly precise, exactly with a perfectly steady beat. Using a metronome's a really good idea with this too. Uh, and see how that works for you and see if it gives you more confidence to play the right rhythms when you're working on this music the next time you're playing in your band or whatever you're playing it for. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in another video.